Howdy. Remember anyone talking about the Siberian traps? <laughs> yes. Finally. We have a quake there. In the middle of them. And it's rather deep. 42 kilometers in depth. 12 hours ago. And it's really in the middle of the Siberian traps. There has been a quake a few days ago in Tixi, where I showed you the landscape. And uh, that's a really interesting one. Mm. We are now at Google Earth. And the quake has some, has happened. Here is a city somewhere. Tutonhani, or something like that. And the quake has been somewhere here. Sorry for mixing up languages every now and then. And the quality, quality of the pictures isn't that well. But it looks really intriguing. The whole landscape there, even though the quality is really not good. And there's like peatlands, craters all over the place, dendritical patterns here really nicely. This might be actually flow patterns. They don't look too dendritical to me. But the whole region is really interesting. And it would be really cool to have better pictures of many places of, from that region. But we don't. Let's see if we can pick up any like real photos from the region. Yeah, really nice. So there's at least one car and one house. <clears throat> one thing is, I have to say about the Siberian traps. Or I would like to say. They're like split in half. There's a lower part and a higher part. Ah, now we get we are getting somewhere. Basalt. Easy to spot and layers, many layers of different colored basalt. Hmm. How is that possible? according to geologists. Someone was writing something here. Maybe there are some petroglyphs as well, somewhere if the modern people go there to make their marks. They might be some old marks as well, somewhere there. I just thought I have searched something else about the Siberian traps. I have no idea, i.e. A-C-U-K whatever page that is. The Siberian traps are the remnants of a widespread volcanic activity that occurred in the northern Pangaea about 250 million years ago. The most common rock type is basalt, which usually erupts <coughs> effusively rather than explosively, but the eruptions can be prolonged, lasting for years or even decades, and producing mass flows from comparisons with the much younger Columbia River basalts erupted 50 million years ago. Single flow events may have exceeded 2,000 cubic kilometers, hence the term flood basalt. Flow fields in the larger provinces such as the Deccan and the Siberian traps may have been much larger. Other rock types include the more coarsely crystalline equivalents of basalt, dolerite and gabbro. Emplaced as intrusive sheet and stocks and beneath the West Siberian basin, rhyolites, the unusual alkaline 
Pikrites, Maya Mekites occur in the Maya Mecca Kotui region northeastern of Norilsk. Abundant basaltic pyroclast rocks in the lower parts of the succession in Nitsaniyaya Tunguska indicate explosive phreatic eruptions. Hmm. Tunguska. Explosive. The Siberian traps have attracted a considerable study, not least around the region of the Norilsk nickel sulfide deposit, the largest in the world, where the traps gain their maximum known thickness. The data from other regions in Siberia are sparse because of the difficult terrain and because the traps are buried beneath thick piles of sediments. Over the last two decades, interest has increased because of the possibility link of the possible link between the traps and the end permeal mass extinction. <clears throat> yeah, really interesting. <laughs> I haven't read that. Similar coincidences exist between the Deccan traps and the end Kratajko's extinction as 65 million years ago and the Central Atlantic Magmatic Province and the end Triassic extinction at 200 million years ago. To fully evaluate these links, casual or not, we need to know the full extent of the traps and their duration and then determine the environmental impact of the volcanism. A statistic, an individual basalt flow with a volume of 1500 cubic kilometers would bury the whole of the UK beneath about 6 meters of lava, a greater London beneath about one kilometer, assuming a total volume of three kilometers for the Siberian traps, this could bury the whole of Eastern Europe beneath more than one kilometer of basalt or the whole of the UK beneath about 12 kilometers. So this is a map I made once. And uh, I guess there would be many other possibilities to somehow compare things. But I did it like this in this case. And that's the Siberian Traps region. And I guess our quake was somewhere here. And the interesting thing is, if you go a bit more north, you can see somehow in a similar way, a similar kind of landscape. There are so many similarity between those two things. And one thing is also to know that, which is important. This is elevated and this is a low land, high land and low land. So it's probably about the polarity of the energy which created those, because I think they might, might have been created through electrical discharge events, because since we are in the north and there isn't really any plate boundary in this region neither. And the reason why I mentioned that we are on the north is because it is, the region is under the influence of the Birkeland current, which flows through earth. So we might not be surprised to have this kind of electrical discharge patterns here to be found at the poles. But I leave it up to you. What do you think? I think those Siberian traps, they should be really kept in eye, <coughs> in the eyes, in all of the eyes. <laughs> yeah, because if you watch that map here, The closest volcanoes you find are north into the Himalaya, southern of the Baikal Sea, and here really at the east, Balagantas, Balagantas, or however you spell it. But there are no volcanoes here.
which is for me a little bit hard to believe that there wouldn't be any And it's really a pity that we cannot get any sharper pictures of the region here. Just doesn't. Just doesn't. There could be many possibilities for, or like, places where one could think this could be a volcano. Let it be a cryptodome no one knows about. Because cryptodomes aren't very popular volcanoes, obviously. It's a really, really, really interesting place, those Siberian traps. And it's a really big area. It's huge. And you'll find all kinds of really interesting things like this here. Here we get better quality. That's just amazing. It's really amazing. Yeah. I have spent many hours watching landscapes. <laughs> but I leave it here. Siberian traps hit with a deep earthquake. Let's see if there's any more going on there. But actually, now I just remembered. I wanted to go to Glermont Ferrand in France because. We have some activity there still going on. This is now seven days earthquake, so don't be scared. But anyway, here, Jatte du Mourol. Five hours ago, five hours ago, 12 hours ago, three days ago, yesterday, 18 hours, seven hours. So there is still something going on, quite close to the marked volcano, Glermont Ferrand, Jean de In order to mm, make it a bit more accurate. It's about 20 kilometers. Uh, 20 kilometers from the volcano. But this doesn't mean too much, I guess. Because the region in Europe with volcanic activity is about, let's say, that region. So it's in the proximity of at least one volcano. I leave it here. Thanks. Bye.